Hello, my name is Mandy. I'm a member of St John's Church in Egham, and it's my pleasure to spend some time with you uh, in our Lent prayer uh, to praise and worship God together. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you are with us always. Thank you that we can come to you and offer our minds and our hearts to receive all that you have for us today. We pray that you would speak, that you would move in our lives, and that we would know you better. Amen. Our Lent call. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence, fasting and generosity. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you therefore to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance by prayer, fasting and generosity, and by reading, meditating and acting on God's holy word. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. We'll pause to be silent and reflect for a moment. Our reading today is from Lamentations 5, 1 to 14. Remember, O Lord, what has befallen us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We have become orphans, fatherless. Our mothers are like widows. We must pay for our drinking wood, drink, the wood we get must be bought. Our pursuers are at our necks. We are weary. We are given no rest. We have given the hand to Egypt and to Assyria to get enough bread. Our fathers sinned and are no more. And we bear their iniquities. Slaves rule over us. There is none to deliver us from their hand. And we get our bread at the peril of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. Our skin is hot as an oven with the burning heat of famine. Women are raped in Zion, young women in the towns of Judah. Princes are hung up by their hands and no respect is shown to the elders. Young men are compelled to grind at the mill and boys stagger under loads of wood. The old men have left the city gate, the young men their music. So today we start the fifth and final poem written in the book of Lamentations from the city of Jerusalem and in the disaster that has struck her people. Our reading is more of a prayer poem, differing from the other four in structure. It's not an acrostic poem, and that is where the, the first line of each verse begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. That's not the same structure in this poem as it has been in the other four. It's very hard for us to appreciate the art and skill involved in writing of the Lamentations, because um, in translation we lose a lot of the rhythmic beauty and quality um, but it's good to be aware that this is a beautifully crafted book full of emotions and it gives us permission to allow and express our feelings when speaking to God. We don't have to be prim and proper. It's also interesting to understand that the Mlents were used um, as a liturgy. Um, used in annual celebrations um, uh, commemorating the fall of the temple and at times of national disaster. Much of
much as we're using them today um, to in the lead up to Easter and to reflect on the worldwide disaster of the pandemic. The Book of Lamentations expresses the hard truth about life in light of sin and rebellion in generations past and present. It also offers us uh, lessons for overcoming sin, depression and defeat. And to do that, we start with remembering. Then we return to repentance, recognition and finally renewal. So t let's take a brief look at our verses today. Um, we start with remembering. Remember, O oh Lord, what has befallen us. They're talking about the sorrow and disgrace, the hardship and the oppression. God's chosen people have lost their special gift from God. Their land. It's the land of their inheritance. Once they were safe from their enemies on that land. And now there is no rest. They are continually persecuted. All the able men have gone, leaving widows and orphans or women like widows. Famine has ravished the land, making water and wood and bread scarce, expensive commodities, even commodities that they would risk their life to collect. In verse 7, it says, Our fathers sinned and are no more, and we bear their iniquities. The word father in this reading uh, could be interpreted as ancestors or some might say leaders. So whatever the interpretation, the failure of the forefathers, the leaders, uh, uh, people in authority has failed them. Um, and that's true for today as well as in these times. Our ancestors sinned. We have to face the consequences of their actions. We have to face the consequences of um, ages past, the extinction of rare breeds due to hunting for recreation. The institutional, um, the industrial revolution has uh, caused great damage to our climate and deforestation and fertilization have destroyed destroyed much of God's beautiful creation. Our ancestors' sins have impacts on us today. In verse 8 it says, Slaves rule over us. The proper order of society was destroyed. It was turned on its head. Once they had slaves. They had donkeys and mules to do the heavy work. Now they are the slaves to ruthless masters. Their young children and young adults are doing the work of the donkeys and all the women are being appallingly treated. They talk of their skin being hot as an oven. Uh, this is talking about the effects of the famine ravaging their bodies as well as the heat of the sun. Their rulers are being killed, or princes, their rulers or princes, people of authority that they respect, are being strung up, display, displayed publicly to dissuade rebellion and exert oppression. No longer is there a relaxed fellowship or debate at the gate. Discussion or dancing or music have all disappeared. Everything from their previous life has changed. The poem is taking us into the depths of the depression and defeat and recognising the sin being laid upon this generation. It's heartbreaking. We are travelling with them through the historic highs and current lows of the human experience. Most of their pain and our pain is not self-induced. It is a harsh reality of a broken world 
which God deeply loves. They call on the Lord to remember them and they know the Lord will not reject their pleas forever. So when things are hard, when chaos pursues, we remember. Lamentation gives us the foundations to express all of our emotions to God in the certain knowledge that he knows, he hears and he loves us, whatever our feelings or situation. Our lament is as precious as our praise. Amen. So we read our intercessions. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bound down. God of love, hear the cry of those who yearn for love. Fractured families, broken homes, neglected, unwanted, alone. May they know your love. God of justice, Hear the cry of those who yearn for justice. Persecuted and oppressed, exploited, ill-treated, broken. May they know your justice. God of peace, hear the cry of those who yearn for peace. In battle zones and broken states, frightened fearful, anxious, may they know your peace. God of healing, hear the cry of those who yearn for healing, physical and spiritual, hurting, weakened, depressed, may they know your healing. God of mercy, Hear the cry of those who yearn for mercy, convicted, in need of your grace, contrite, humble, bowed down. May they know your mercy. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. Gathering our prayers together into one, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And we finish with the blessing. May you know the peace of God, the love of God, the justice of God, the healing and mercy of God, this day and all days. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me in your lunch break. I hope the rest of your day is blessed beyond measure. Goodbye.